This is a video review of one man's experiments. He showed his updraft gasifier which he used to turn coal into gas. Then he used a gas boiler to heat his house. To reduce coal consumption, steam was fed into the gasifier to enrich the gas with hydrogen. Up to 60% of coal can be saved by using water. I decided to review this method because of this man's creativity. Normally, updraft gasifiers are tall metal columns lined on the inside. A lot of metal, welder's time, and, consequently, money are required to build them. But his model turned out to be inexpensive. Let's look at what he's got, the advantages and disadvantages of this model, as well as the test results. A pit was dug, a reinforced concrete pad was placed at its bottom, and four concrete one-meter rings were installed on the pad. Three holes were made at different levels in the rings to install sleeves at an angle. On the reverse side, the drainage and air feeding pipes were installed. Mineral wool and metal profiled sheeting are inside the rings to serve as a kind of heat insulation. A cylinder of heat-resistant stainless steel is installed inside the upper part. The ground is tamped. The holes with the sleeves are caulked with reinforced concrete mortar. The bottom of the shaft is lined with bricks to install the ash pan and grate. The grate is made of a cast iron manhole cover. Combustible gas comes out of the top hole of the shaft into the pipe. The middle pipe supplies water steam. Also, the middle pipe is used to shake the grate. The lower pipe is made for forced blowing, apparently, air enters under the grate. Another pipe is used to pump out running down water from the undecomposed steam. There is a cantilever crane axle near the gasifier shaft. An 800 kg electric hoist is mounted on the crane arm to lift the parts of the gasifier. There is a gas boiler near the gasifier. There are three fans with speed controllers for blowing, forced circulation, and forced ejection. Air ducts are made of stainless steel. The ash pan, where, according to the idea, ash falls is made of a 200-liter barrel, set at the bottom of the pit in a brick shaft, and on the upper walls of the shaft, the grate is placed. All the parts are installed, and half a cubic meter of coal is loaded into the shaft. The gasifier is starting up. Unfortunately, the video doesn't show the steam circulation scheme. Apparently, the steam is produced in the same shaft and is fed into its middle hole, i.e. second from the bottom. According to the author, the shaft worked for two weeks on one load. In winter, at minus 20 degrees, the pipes did not freeze. The heated water was used to heat the house. The ground around the shaft was warm. A problem arose during the operation. There were pops under the lid, from which the concrete lid moved. The shaft had to be mothballed at the end of the season at the request of frightened neighbors. Now I will point out the advantages and disadvantages of the shaft based on my theoretical and practical experience. I respect the author's bravery to place a updraft coal gasifier in the ground around the neighbors. Usually, such gasifiers were made of iron with liners to protect them from burnout and corrosion of metal by acids. The outlet pipes were also lined, as they didn't last long due to a whole set of acids. The author should not have spent money on heat-resistant stainless steel at the top of the shaft or metal in general. There will be nothing left of it one way or the other, and it will happen faster than is assumed. If the author uses gas very close to the shaft in a gas boiler, it doesn't matter how much heat the shaft dissipates through the walls to the ground. Of course, the temperature in the shaft will drop a bit, which will slightly affect the hydrogen output from the water fed. I don't think that's a very big difference, so it can be neglected. Now let's see how this design differs from the classical updraft gasifiers. I drew a scheme and found some examples of updraft gasifiers. In classic coal gasifiers, air and steam are fed from below, under the grate of burning coal. The temperature should be kept below the melting point of coal ash, otherwise, the sintered crust of slag impenetrable to the air will form. This is why pyramidal rotating grates were made to break the slag. The grate was constantly rotating at a selected slow speed. The slag broke and air with steam passed evenly through the fuel layer.
Also, a certain layer of slack, about 30 centimeters, should be kept on the grate, so the grate would not burn out. The steam helped the slag to disperse. As the grate rotated, it pushed the slag out from the sides of the cup, which rim went beyond the walls of the gasifier, where the slag was freely discharged. I have read hundreds of books describing how this solution appeared. I must tell you that the inventors had a lot of trouble until they came up with it. However, it was only suitable for certain coal grades and certain sizes of coal lumps. Below I'll explain why. Sometimes steam was not fed with the air, but there was a water seal under the grate where hot ash would freely fall, evaporating water. The heat from the upper heated grate was also transferred to the water, which evaporated and rose upwards turning into hydrogen. Let's compare two gasifiers in the scheme, one buried in the ground and the other, a classic one. The author does not describe how he gets steam, but we can see that the steam is fed into the middle of the shaft, while the air is fed under the grate. This is incorrect. The steam should have been fed into the same place as the air. By blowing air under the grate, we get a temperature that can exceed 1600 degrees, melt any grate, and clog everything with molten ash, which can already center at 900 degrees. The grate should have been made perforated and rotating. From what I saw in the video, I realized it was just a cast iron manhole cover. I think it even had no holes. It's hard to see. The grate rotation mechanism could have been placed under the grate and water barrel, taking the rotation rods out of the shaft wall into the pit, where the rod would rotate from a gear motor. The rotation speed could be adjusted with a variable speed drive. The rotating grate would break the slag which would fall into water, for example, in that very water barrel, while hot, and the rising steam would enrich the gas with hydrogen and reduce the consumption of coal to a maximum of 60%. The fuel level should always be kept high because water needs 1300 degrees in 3 seconds to turn into hydrogen on charcoal. It takes twice as long on coal because coal has a worse carbon reactivity than charcoal. If the steam doesn't decompose, it will go into the flare, reducing its calorific value. The top cover, in my opinion, should have been made with a sand plug. Not only coal but also with waste products, for example maize heads or branches, can be turned into gas in such a gasifier. But there is one condition, the gas must be burnt in the immediate vicinity of the gasifier, otherwise, a lot of tar, 30 to 120 grams per one cubic meter of gas, will be produced, and no pipe can withstand so much of it. But there is no need to rotate the grid if wood is used. The usual flat fixed grid made of rebar is enough. There is no need to feed water from below because the wood ash melting point is about 1400 degrees, and the burning wood itself cannot reach such temperatures due to water in it. As I mentioned, it is advisable to make fuel of the same size pieces for coal gasifiers. The author of the concrete shaft had pops under the lid that made it move. This happened because the loaded fuel was apparently of different sizes. It turns out that the smaller pieces burn out and form big gaps between the larger pieces, so the unburned air oxygen passes up where combustible gas already is. As they mix, a detonating mixture forms and explodes. It was the same in coal-fired gasifiers in the past, so they were preferably loaded with equal-size fuel pieces. The gas then evenly passed through the whole fuel layer and didn't create dead zones. What do you think? Does such a gasifier for domestic use is feasible?